Hey guys, it's Captain Daniel Hyun from ABC's of Attraction, and today we have a very special guest. He's an Instagram influencer, he's a transformation coach, he's been on TEDx, and now in the fall he's premiering in his own documentary called The Ugly Model. We have the definition of Asian masculinity. Kevin Kreider here with us. What's up, Kevin? What's up, man? Good to see you, man. Yeah, I don't think Kevin Kreider means Asian masculinity, though, right? I mean, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but I feel like, um, I mean, I've been actually, you know, seeing you from afar. And I remember the first time I saw, like, your YouTube channel and how you kind of, actually, your vulnerability, too, right? I think everyone has their own definition of masculinity. And, and we'll get into that later. But I think you portray, I think the most important thing, you portray yourself as a man in your own way. And I know you have your documentary coming out in the fall, and it's the ugly model which you're personally uh, starring in. Yeah. And actually, that documentary, um, from what I've seen in trailers and everything, it's actually showing a very vulnerable side. Totally. I was wondering if you could share with the viewers that personal story of, because in the end, that is what made you true. Because even right now, I feel like you're just grounded and you know who you are. So, can you just share what the documentary is going to be about, and maybe yeah. a little bit personal about that? So the documentary is about me, my life story, and also to the people that have come, I've come across my life story, and just other people of influence in the Asian community that have similar stories of, of me uh, growing up as an Asian American male who didn't feel very sexy and feel confident in myself and who didn't feel like I was Asian enough or white enough for the USA culture, as yeah, you will. Exactly. So I've also been bullied a lot and picked on and taunted. And, you know, I'm sure you felt the same way and had the same experiences, right? Yeah, I mean, I think that's why I kind of bite off you is like, it, it kind of has a special place in my heart because you know how I feel like you're, you're an attractive guy, but we get these compliments of like, hey, you're this for an Asian guy. You're good looking for yeah. an Asian guy. You're tall for an Asian guy. Right. It's like, is the Asian male standard lower than a normal male? Yeah. And I just didn't get it. And I also got bullied, but I was fat and Asian. So it was just like, it was very hard. You know what I mean? So I think for you to share the story, but becoming who you are, I think right. the transformation is like the most important part too. I think my transformation, there's two parts to my transformation actually. Mm -hmm. One was when I was actually really skinny. And then I was able to find my way into fitness and started to conquer and achieve fitness. Mm -hmm. And with that, I was able to build confidence and start dating girls. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, rejection wasn't a huge thing for me so much anymore until online dating came out. Then that was a really weird yeah, part of a my whole, life. That's a whole, that's a whole other part. Whole but other once part, online yeah. dating came out, actually I started to feel really insecure about myself again. Gotcha. But uh, I would say that my transformation through that was really important because I started to become really good at something. Yeah. Because like my stereotype with math and science, right, wasn't yeah. there. Like I, I was in what they call conceptual science, which means it's like special ed for science. Yeah. You know, like yeah, I was in ESL. I was like, I don't even know what that is. ESL was like, yeah, I think they just put it in, put me in there because I was Asian. It's about you don't know how to speak English. Oh. I was like, I was, I literally knew how to speak it, but they put me in there when I was in elementary school. And it, it's a weird feeling where, like, you were born in America, yeah. but they put you in ESL. And I graduated, like, after a year. I didn't have any issues, you know? That's but, crazy. Yeah. But, yeah. Like, so we, we come, up cr come across these challenges, and I found myself really getting cocky, even. Yeah. Like, from this really shy, introverted, never-speaking guy to cocky. Yeah. But I got to tell you, like, cocky was better than shy and totally introverted and not speaking. Of course. You know, and I just think it was one of those things where I just said to myself, I was like, ah, oh, man, this is how I always wanted to feel. And, yeah. like, the girls I wanted to attract and the people. And, like, yeah. I fit into a crew and it was a group of people. But then, like, I would say that part of me also felt insecure, too. Because uh -huh. I knew that my confidence was based off of, like, <clears throat> you know, and, like... Just your outside looks. Right. Yeah, yeah. I and the way people responded to me. Yeah. And so then I went to New York City, started modeling, started to lose, you know, weight and um, pursued acting, yeah. and started to forget about fitness, and I got really beaten down by the modeling industry, actually. Wow. Because I felt like when I went into modeling, I was going to all of a sudden become like a face that other Asians have never seen before. Yeah. Right? Because I needed to see that. 
And the one person that I saw was Daniel Liu. He was the first model signed by Ford back in, I think, 2006. It was quite a big deal. Or 2008. It was such a big deal. And I was like, I need to see that. And I need to see more of that. And there's, there's a chance for me to actually bring that to other younger versions of myself. Yeah. So when I went up to New York, I didn't realize how discriminatory they were gonna be. Like yeah. Super discriminatory. Like, first of all, they don't really see too many Asian faces. They wanna see it, mm. but you know, it was run by, you know, white people basically. You yeah. Know, who make a lot of decisions in the casting rooms. Exactly. My agents were gay and minorities and they loved Asian men actually. Yeah. You know? Um, and then two, fitness. Yeah. I was abnormally like big for an Asian guy, yeah. so I wasn't what they would fit into a box of an Asian guy. Yeah, they kind of want the skinny look, right? It's super skinny. Yeah, like no skinny. matter what, it didn't matter how skinny I got, I wasn't skinny enough. Really? Like, wow. I was I was one seventy two, six foot tall, the lightest I've been since high school, and I was still not thin enough, even though I fit into all their clothes perfectly. It's just that they don't like when I take my clothes off, because then it's like. I'm too muscular, you know? Oh. So they're like, yeah, we don't, because Asians, you know, because there's this thought that Asians don't get big, so that's not cool. So instead of, like, you have to work towards them, what they wanted to see. Right. Gotcha. But, you know, I, um, my friend Parker, who's also a good friend, he still is a good friend of mine, I trained him for a while, and we both went up to New York to model together. He has tattoos, and they're like, tattoos aren't cool, but he made it cool. So then after we spoke for a while and I started to see him in his life, um, he told me something really important, which mm-hmm. was that you got to be you, the rest of the industry will catch up. Oh, wow. So just be yourself. Be yourself, man. If you love fitness, work it out, you yeah. know? But it's like, be your best version of it. It doesn't mean I'm going to go all of a sudden and inject steroids in my ass and then become huge. Yeah. It's just that maybe like, it's okay if I'm a little bit more muscular. The industry will catch up. Yeah. And the industry kind of is catching up. It's just that they're not into like more muscular Asian guys yet. Yeah. You know, it's like progressing into other areas of Asian men, yeah. right, that we've seen. Long story short, I started to go into like a lot of drugs, a lot of alcohol, because like that made me feel confident about myself. Because mm-hmm. you know, when you're doing Adderall and drinking, you kind of feel like you're on top of the world. Yeah, you don't care. I totally skipped over personal development. Yeah, yeah. You know, people are like, you gotta, you gotta take care of that man. And yeah. Nobody told me how. Yeah. They're just like, you be you. Yeah. Fuck those people. They're yeah. not helping me at all. Do you know how easy that is to say to a fat person, you just need to lose weight? Yeah, it's like, the yeah, we know. It's right. like, when I was at, I was like, my mom actually, I remember like I went up to her, it's like I'm crying in front of her, yeah. right? But I didn't want to hear it. I just wanted her to hug me. I love my mom, yeah. by the way. Like, I love her. <laughs> but I just went up to her one night. It was like midnight. And I literally went up to her. I was like, mom, I need, I mean, you know what? I got bullied the most at church, actually, sure. by my own race. Wow. Yeah, Korean church. Uh, but I remember I went to my mom and I was like, mom, like, I don't know what to do. I'm overweight and all I get is made fun of. Instead of like hugging me, like, hey, I'm here for you. She's like, you're the one who eats a lot. Right. And you're the one who's overweight. And like, I know that. But I wanted her to nurture me kind of thing. Right. And I remember that got me like, I mean, I'm, you're open up too, so I'll open up a little bit. It's like, I remember that night, that's the first time I like experienced true depression where I remember I went to the kitchen and like the dishwasher was open and I picked up like a, wooden shaft and knife mm-hmm. and the only reason I'm still here is because I was kind of scary cat still you know so I remember like that's how depressed I got like we yeah. know we we don't want to know that truth though you know right. like we do know but it's like it's like I don't know it's just we don't it hurts right the truth hurts enough and hearing from our loved ones or people is just too totally. much so I think too many times that's what was wrong with um what we hear about stuff like that is that they don't give us a solution. Yeah. They just tell us what's wrong. Yeah. And that's easy to do. Exactly. Like, I can go around the world telling what's wrong with everything, but it doesn't help. Yeah. You know, like, you need criticism, but you need constructive feedback, too, with it. Yeah. Something you can take action from afterwards. Exactly. Like, saying, hey, you know what? Maybe this coat's not fitting you right. I got this awesome brand. Maybe it's, like, Zara. I don't know what this is. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, like, it could fit you better, like, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So you should go get this. Try this on. So, like, that's an ugly jacket. Right. Yeah, it's like... Because when you do that, whenever somebody does that, that actually, for me especially, it came from a feeling of insecurity 
to bring someone down to make me feel better. Yeah, yeah. Because I was not happy with who I was in my life. And there's a lot of people out there who do that on the internet, who do that for cyberbullying because it makes it louder. It's immediate gratification of me feeling better about myself for a short period of time. Yeah. But in the long term, I got to keep doing that. Yeah. And then, by the way, people don't know this, but you keep doing that and being a shitty person makes you more of a shitty person, which makes you feel worse about yourself, yeah. which does not build self-esteem. So people wonder why I can't build self-esteem. Well, it's because you're not doing esteem of blacks. You're doing shit that like you're ashamed of that's not actually coming from an honest place. This is honest, like saying, hey man, you're fat. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. honest. But like, here's the thing. You're not actually doing it from a place of wanting to help out. You're yeah, doing yeah, it yeah. out of a selfish place yeah. to call out your shortcomings yeah. to make me feel better about myself. Yeah. Or like, you know what? I showed him. You know, he'll get better after this. Yeah. You're not doing it out of a place of service. Yeah, it's so your own self-interest. It's right? your own self-interest. Yeah. So that's why I say it's like some people say it's like keeping it real. Yeah. You're keeping it real is actually hurting yourself. Yeah. And you're not gaining self-esteem. Gotcha. So confidence comes from doing self-esteem. It's a self-esteemable acts. Yeah. Not just doing good shit too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. All right. So let's go back then to the focus of. It sounds like the obviously we can't give away too much with documentary. You gotta go watch it. But the thing is, like that transformation of like how you, because this is like knowledge, right? This right. is like Kevin Cryer knowledge coming at you. But how? What is that transformation with you? What's What's the moment you're like? This is obviously it's a hero's journey, right? You went through all this stuff. So how did you like become from that Kevin Kreider to the actual character, the best? You know how? So my thing is like, it's not about just be yourself. It's be the best self. And it seems like you are continuing this journey, but you literally have improved dramatically, becoming this version of Kevin. So how did you do that? So I would say the number one thing for me was actually self awareness, mm. right? Like learning self awareness of like where my insecurities come from. Mm. And to be able to do that, you have to be honest. Yeah. And to be honest is to say like, I am not perfect. You know, they always say you're whole, complete and perfect. Yeah, Danny, you are fine the way you are, but you could be better. And by the way, if you stay exactly how you are right now, five years from now, you will be an inferior version of yourself. Like we just will, like without growth, we die, right? I have the saying, you either grow or you go. Like, I'd rather just grow. So, where, write that down. Yeah, write that. Yeah. It's one of my favorite things to say because people undervalue personal growth. And I had to be taught. Yeah. Um, I know I'm kind of a slow learner, and I actually think that's what really made me excel because I can be honest with myself and say, you know what, I'm not a fast learner. I need somebody to show me. And I want to learn fast. And I know the way I learn is not through just reading stuff, but experiencing it. Everything that I talk about is because I've experienced it. I've yeah. gone through it and I've come out on the other side. So the first thing that I would say is listen to other people because um, I had a time where I wasn't listening to people because yeah. I thought I was a shit up until I was like 25. Then I realized how I felt like a piece of shit, but then I didn't want your help because I can do it on my own. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I started to listen to other people and actually take their advice and yeah. start doing personal development courses and coaching and you know a lot of it worked a lot of it didn't here's the thing you take what you need and then you just throw out the rest yeah bruce lee says it you know he's like take what works throw out the rest 100 percent. i think one thing about kevin that i noticed is that at first like it's like that probably people probably judge you be like oh this guy's a model he's a yeah. fit he was a fitness model in magazines tedx he has to be probably cocky but I think you come off as a very humble guy and it comes from that one rule you live by is to learn from everyone. Yeah. Like the word humility and humbleness yeah. or humble, I think has a bad rep. Yeah. Because yeah, a exactly. lot of people think it is something where you have to just roll over and just let people walk all over. Exactly. You. That's actually not being humble. That is actually what we call a people pleaser. You know, so like I would say for me, being humble is really about knowing that I'm not the best, but I'm also not the worst. But like knowing I want to be the best. So that's where humility comes from. But it also comes from experience, like in a sense of I, everything I'm sharing is not something I just made up in the ether. Yeah. Like it came from other people, mentors, um, me sharing to another mentor of mine and a mentor sharing his knowledge to me that was also passed down from somebody else. I think 
the problem with a lot of people who want confidence and self esteem yeah. and want to want help is that they believe that they'll just manifest it out of the ether out of nowhere because they're going to sit there and just think positive thoughts but really you got to go out and actually meet these people yeah. and actually experience it because you're not going to get that one-on-one -on -one interaction from yeah. youtube yeah you know i remember what you're talking about like you know sharing that piece of advice over over lunch yeah you're not going to get that through a youtube yeah channel no, no you know you need somebody who's experienced and that's what i said about you is that like you have this energy that yeah. I have when I was younger, especially. Yeah. But I also know where your mind's gonna go if I let you just say like, "Yeah, man, this is how it's gonna be," and it's like, keep that energy. Yeah. But realistically, let's let's take a real step at this. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Don't let's not disillusion ourselves. Yeah. You know, so like that comes from me understanding and listening and then also being realistic with things too yeah and i know a lot of people are gonna be harming like saying like kevin like how can you stay that realistic you know shoot yeah. for the stars i totally agree with shooting for the stars yeah but the problem is when we expect that we're going to shoot for the stars and miss it yeah then we become so depressed and beat ourselves up yeah, they just crash we just crash yeah. nothing so yeah. it's like that didn't work <laughs> yeah and there's so many like wow there's so many golden nuggets in there like the first thing was that um, and I'm gonna make this a uh, like a statement. I think confidence is humbleness. Yes. Because even a person like you, with all your experiences, you're just talking about you gotta reach out, you gotta be willing to learn, and right there is big. And I think confidence is also being realistic and being keeping your managing your expectations, kind of thing. Right? Exactly. Like, I think that's huge. I think a lot of our viewers, um, they want the confidence is a big thing, right? Because right. you know. I think for the male image, the masculinity image, it's about like even a dating advice, like just be confident, right? Mm -hmm. But it's such a, confidence is not an emotion, it's not a feeling, it's, I think it's just a general term that you get to actually define yourself. I don't know if you agree on that, but I feel like confidence is different for each person. And I think right now, this is huge. It's like, because I feel like in our culture, Asian culture, it's like get rich, be a doctor, be successful, kind of like that kind of thing. And that brings confidence, but we all know it doesn't. Well, okay, so going back to the getting rich and be successful thing, yeah. like, I was 25 and I thought I hit it. Wow. You know, I had a really successful personal training business, was doing men's health stuff, Yeah, had a girlfriend, you know, money, I was about to buy a house yeah. in Philadelphia, like, make my family proud and all that kind of stuff, like, yeah. partying, bottle service, and I wasn't happy. Yeah. You know, like, I was chasing this idea that we, we are implanted by yeah. marketing, right? Yeah, like exactly. Marketers plant that in their head that we have this bottle service and we, we, get, we get rich, we're gonna have happiness. Yeah. Yeah. That's not true. It's like, what does money buy us? Yeah. That's what creates happiness, yeah. right? Like maybe women do make you happy. It makes me happy, that's for sure. Yeah. But it's like, but then what kind of type of woman do I want? Exactly, you know? exactly. You have to know. You have to know. Yeah. So I think that comes through trial and error too. Yeah. But I would say I was actually not my most confident then. Yeah. And now I I'm not a trainer. I feel like I, I feel more successful. Yeah. Um. And I also know the people I hang out with makes yeah. me feel more successful. Yeah. You know, because uh, you know, there's a power of attraction there, right? Yeah, yeah. So I would also say this too confidence comes from what they say certainty right yeah knowing you're good at something yeah so a lot of people like computer people feel confident when they're coding yeah or in a business meeting yeah you know my confidence comes from sharing my experience with other people yeah my confidence comes from contributing yeah or being able to help other people out so when you can find confidence in that instead of all this material stuff yeah right or the status driven world that we're in yeah then you will gain confidence. Yeah. Because it's about what you can give and you can give endlessly. Yeah. But when it's about getting, you know, it does, you're out of control on that yeah. one. Yeah. You know? no, I agree. I think, I mean, we always talk about this, especially, you know, our clients or students who's like, what's your why? We always ask, what's your why? Right. And everyone actually comes with a why. And it's, it's, everything's just, a, I feel like once you know your why, everything's just a bonus. Girls, mm -hmm. money, cars, whatever, because it sounds like you had an amazing life in Philadelphia, yeah. but you just dropped everything and went to pursue your true uh, passion, which is your transformation coaching, um, your program that we could talk about later. That became your passion. You dropped a great life. You had a 
probably a beautiful girlfriend. I mean, like the house, the money, and everything. And you came to now Los Angeles to actually transport people's lives, and that's your why. Totally. And I think that's what we tell. It's like you gotta notice, you gotta find. And it was super woo woo, super self help. But there's a reason why every big name says it, right? Know your why, totally. so you know where you're going, right? Totally. And your why will leave you with the way you can contribute and be of service yeah. to other people yeah. to make you feel better about yeah. yourself. Like I've, I've, you've probably experienced this too being here in LA. There's so much money. Yeah, right. Exactly. So much status and fame here. That and like beauty and everything. Beauty that if your confidence literally just comes from that, you're fucked. Yeah. There's too much competition in that like you're just like oh. It's not even just too much, right? Yeah. There's so much. Yeah. That true. all kind of just like you think you start to look fat or whatever. Yeah. So that's why it's always around us. Then yeah. we start to compare ourselves, and then yeah. someone's always better than you. Someone's not. always going to be in LA, right, especially yeah, more famous, crazy. money, whatever. You yeah. Know? I mean, even the famous people think that. And so, like, I've been hanging around with, like, a lot of people with, like, lots of wealth and all that stuff. And some of them, especially when they don't do anything with it, it's all about what they're getting, you know, who they're around, yeah. like, the status and stuff. And, yeah. you know, I'm seeing with this person, this selfie with this person. Yeah. And I'm like, but they're so fragile yeah. inside. And I'm not trying to be anybody different than myself. Yeah. And you can see they're trying to form themselves to meet the other person. Yeah. And real confidence comes from you being yourself and other people kind of just like accept it. And yeah. Like being around you, you're authentic. Yeah. Or they try to meet you. Yeah. You know, and actually when you're yourself, you let people's guards down. Yeah. And you can really create this like deep, authentic connection with yeah. people. And in LA, it's, that's so right. hard. It's so hard because everybody's trying to put up a front. Yeah, right? but then when you are that one person out of the norm, who is, which is be you, yeah. like just be the real you and speak your voice, that is actually attractive here. It now. is attractive. Because it's become so shallow here uh, in LA. And I feel like that's something I noticed about you. You're just always you. And you speak your truth in, in an authentic way, but also not like... Not in a cocky way. I think that's because you're. You, I feel like with you through this whole transformation through yeah. years of experience, you have really no understanding who you are and who you want to be. Right, because like when I when I speak, okay. it's, my transformation comes from when I speak and try to share. It's not trying to one up you. Yeah. Or, or it's not trying to hurt, like hurt you so I feel better. It's because. I know there might be some type of pain there and I've felt it before yeah. and I just want to help out. Yeah. And in any way, right? Yeah. Um, you know, within reason, like I'm not going to let you like shit all over me or yeah. hurt my career and shit like that. But it's like, I've been able to get a better perspective on that way. Yeah. You know, and I think part of what has been a transformation for me is actually not depending on drugs prescription yeah. you yeah. know like i used to believe i was adhd depressed anxious i took drugs for that yeah it was worse for me prescription drugs you know it was worse for me yeah um i was i was numb yeah to everything wow you know the only thing i felt was happiness or depression anything in between just became like depression or happy yeah you know there was no steady moments of like peace or just like gratitude or anything yeah like, it was just boom boom, boom. like yeah. that's it my yeah. life was fucked man yeah. And then, you know, drinking on top of it, like, numbs it even more. And it's just, like, all the same things that we consume is to numb these emotions. Yeah. Because no one taught us how to yeah. deal with these emotions. Right? Yeah. So, the way I deal with these emotions now is I practice the 12 steps. Yeah. Right? Um, and not only are the 12 steps actually used for people with addictions and alcohol, but there's... Um, there's spiritual principles behind it. Yeah. You don't have to use the word spiritual if you want. It's just something yeah. that you can understand. <laughs> yeah. But there's principles behind each step yeah. that you can use in your everyday life. Yeah. Like the first step is just honesty. Mm -hmm. Like be honest that you might be having a problem. Yeah. Because if you can't be honest, then you can't do the rest of any of the work. Yeah. So like my thing is being an Asian guy um, and then feeling insecure, I had to be honest that I don't have all the answers. Yeah. That I'm not the shit. Mm -hmm. You know? I'm not delusional by saying I am this shit. Everybody knows me and should kiss my ass just because I'm six foot and have a body. Yeah. Right? Like, I realized I had a problem. I got help. Yeah. You know? That's, like, the first step. Yeah. So, that's what I mean. It's, like, it's very... 
applicable for everybody's life. Yeah. And um, you know, I do I do practice a little bit more of like other stuff like Buddhism a little bit more. They also have spiritual principles too. But I found that in in the step work I've done, Buddhism also made a lot of sense for me too. Yeah. So also what's helped me a lot actually they say this you probably hear this a lot right get out of your own way yeah yeah get out of your own way yep get out of your own head get out of your own head get out of your own way and what I do is I just trust the energy that's around me yeah right I trust the energy that's around me I trust people yeah right people yeah (laughs) right the universe that um, I'm loved yeah and I deserve love yeah right and I can give it back and that there's plenty to give yeah so I practice all of that daily yeah right so it's like practicing uh uh, some type of energy or faith or divine power that's just greater than you also helps you too yeah because i feel like as a human i'm only so strong yeah but when i have like some type of higher power that maybe i don't understand or understand yeah you're stronger yeah so i've leaned on that a lot too yeah three quick tips that you can give our viewers to implement now three action steps three, they could do right now so three action steps is really just to be honest with yourself right yeah know your flaws know your strengths but nothing worse or nothing better right okay. but also too you can make fun of it gotcha because when you're trying to cover it you're not being honest people yeah. smell bullshit right yep. number two is actually always improve always have things that you can measure to grow on gotcha. right so it could be like hey you know what i want one awesome date a month yeah. Or I want to make this much amount of money or get yeah. this many amount of clients or book this many amount of modeling jobs, whatever it is, yeah. right? Always have something to measure. And the third one is always keep learning, man. Yeah. I read every day. Yeah. 20, 30 minutes, something. Uh, I don't count YouTube videos as reading. I yeah, literally yeah. take my finger, skim it. Except ours. All right. Except ours. <laughs> no, but it's like I read, you know. Yeah, I, yeah, read, you read, I read, I read, yeah, I read. Yeah, always learn. Always be learning from other people that okay. have something that you want. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. That's it. So, Kevin, uh, so you can find Kevin at Instagram at Kevin Kreider. Or where else can they find you? You can find my website, KevinKreider.com, too. Yep. And YouTube channel, right? Kevin Kreider as well. Yeah. Just Kevin Kreider. Just Google that. You'll find everything on that. And also, please subscribe to my channel. at Just click the subscribe button. Um, and Kevin, I really appreciate this, man. You really, really, true brother, true Asian brother. He just, yeah, he just defines masculine in his own way and he's always here to serve and i really really appreciate you guys watching thank you thanks for watching our video i hope you liked it and make sure you guys subscribe to this channel and watch all our other videos great news too every monday we'll be putting out a new weekly video that's right we've got educational seminars street interviews uh fun infield pickup videos and anything else we can come up with that's fun for you guys to watch so check 